Hello, I'm Richard Mize, real estate editor for the Oklahoman and NewsOK.com, talking with Mike Buell of CRRC, Commercial Realty Resources Company, based out of Norman, but he's a broker of multifamily properties, apartment complexes across the metro area. Mike has just issued his year-end 2016 market summary with a forecast to 2017. Mike, first question, what's the next best place to invest in multifamily in apartment complexes for 2017? What we're seeing in 2016, obviously there's three categories of properties that I look at when I, when I do my report. 70s, late 60s, 70s vintage properties, and then I look at mid 80s and then I look at kind of that that last one which new construction really kind of started about 1995 you know there's a few stragglers that were 1998 1999 but for the most part I look at the year 2000 and going forward there's for about new a blank there's about a blank here for a decade after the oil bust in exactly. the 80s, up till about the mid 90s there was no construction exactly that's and why so, the huge gap in the stats if you look at it. well true and so one of the things we've seen you know obviously we've got a big inventory of late 60s early 70s vintage properties those really kind of sat stagnant for a, for a long, long time. I mean, if you think back, you, you go back 15 years and the new construction was mid 80s. Well, that's mm -hmm. now, those properties are, are starting to see a lot of functional obsolescence to them. The new construction that we've seen is now, it, it's taken this market to a different level in terms of rents, occupancy, pricing, the whole bit. So what, what that's done is it, it's created opportunities in these 60s, 70s, even, even mid 80s now. Uh, you know, like I say, a lot of those properties, appliances, countertops, cabinets, those things are old now, 30, 30 years old, right? So you don't just buy an income stream, you buy low, in effect, to put money into Great. it to bring it up to well, market Well, exactly, level, right? because if you look at, if you're going to buy a late 60s, early 70s vintage property, you may not be buying cash flow. You, you, you're you going to buy what you believe is future potential to uh, go in there. That, I mean, the common theory is you're, you're going to buy, you're going to upgrade, and then at some point sell for a profit, hopefully, right? Uh, that, that's what everybody's going to exactly. try to do. That's the whole point. But that's the, that's the area of the market. If, if you look at the sales as a whole, there were 46 transactions last year. In that 60s, 70s vintage, 33 of those were in that category. Okay, so is what we're seeing is, and I'll give you an example, there was one group out of California, they came in and they've bought six, uh, I'm sorry, four properties, 600 units, all with the same concept of we're gonna take these and we're gonna do some upgrades to them, which is something that's really needed when you talk about these older vintage properties. They, they need some money spent on them. And, uh, and what we run into is some people have to spend money on deferred maintenance just because they didn't right. take care of things. Uh, there's a difference between fixing deferred maintenance and actually upgrading a unit that you can get more rent. Okay. Now this is not brand new. This has happened across the decade that I've or 15 years that I've been covering this, and that you and I've been acquainted and talking about this. But why is it now more concentrated or more common? Well, it's becoming more common because a lot of that new construction is still coming out of the ground and now starting to lease. I mean, if you think about a property that from ground up, they started building and leasing, and that could be an 18 month to two year process. So some of those properties that you and I talked about two years ago may now be leasing. So that's why it's become more prevalent now is the, the inventory of new construction is being finished and it's being leased and it's on the market now. Whereas two years ago, maybe they were just finishing up or they were in construction phase. We're and talking about buying to invest and to do value add. Correct. Okay, so I don't understand where you're drawing that connection. Well, where I'm drawing the, the connection of that is that, let's say there's a, a thousand units that were being added to the market. They're, they're gonna do those today, okay? It may be two years from now before those actually have an impact on the market. So maybe I lost you in that, that 
two years ago when we had these conversations, we, we knew there was new construction, but maybe the impact of that new construction isn't actually happening until today. Here's an example if you look at downtown. Why is the investment, why is the investment dollar now more going to the value added 60s and 70s? Okay, the, well, and it's going there because of the fact that these newer properties are all being built to a higher A plus, higher rent okay. level, uh, thousand dollar fifteen hundred dollar in some you instances gotta, two thousand a year a, a month rental rate so not everybody can afford that I, in fact i would say probably the biggest concentration can afford the the cheaper apartments i, I say cheaper cheaper than the, the sure. upper level that's where the the opportunity is is somebody that can go in there and create a better living and env environment and a unit for somebody that can pay seven hundred dollars a month or 800, 600, you know, in that price range, uh, but they can now look at a unit that's being upgraded that's in better condition because it's 50 years old or 30 years old. Follow okay. me? Yes, I do. Now, you've kind of explained why the investment dollars are going more than usual or more than recently to 60s, 70s, vintage, even 80s, because they need the investment, they need the value add, they need the uh, either the, the, the deferred maintenance, undeferred, or just flat out renovations and improvements. Now let's shift to the high end of the market again. Okay. What are, the what are developers doing and why do they continue to, as you've alluded to, build higher and higher for these higher and higher rents, which then brings average rents up. Right. Which is, Takes good, everything which is up. good or bad, depending on whether you're collecting rent checks or writing rent right. checks. <laughs> right. Well, exactly. So on the high end, the developers are doing what and why are they still uh, Okay. Doing? Remember last year we had the conversation about interest rates and, mm -hmm. and I was pretty sure interest rates were going to go up in 2016. Yeah, and, and as was just didn't, Yeah, right. It just didn't happen. Okay. Interest rates are still uh, historically low. So I'm going to say kind of what I said last year a lot of this development is happening because interest rates are so low that developers can come in and, and they can build apartments and they can get interest rates of three and a half to four four and a quarter percent you know some of the new construction deals that are doing uh, HUD type financing you know they're getting 35 40 year amortization on a three and a half interest rate loan so they yeah. look at it and they don't want to miss this opportunity of low interest rates i can't afford not to build it, well exactly whether the <laughs> demand is there or not right. the rate is so low that we down. want to build because we who knows if they're going to be that low again now so, is that sustainable how can that be sustainable if it's based on financial uh, conditions and financial questions rather than quote demand per se. Well and again I'll be the I'll, I guess I'll play the devil's advocate here I don't know that it is sustainable but again I, I kind of go back to my my other reference that these things take a process from beginning to the point that they're leasing up and not only leasing up but to the point where a property is going to hit a 95 90 percent occupancy rate okay so from here to here, there's this process in between, and is is what happens is all of these properties that have been built are at some point here they're all going to hit this this final stage where everybody's leasing, everybody's after the same tenant, and everybody realizes maybe the demand's not there. Okay, that and again last year I, I probably said that that we're going to come up on this point. I'm I'm going to say it again just be. <laughs> I get maybe if I say it long enough, it'll <laughs> happen. But my point is, it's going to happen at some point right. where the demand will be quantified, whether or not it's really out there in the market or not. And uh, at the same time, the lower end properties will uh, will eventually have basically all been torn down, having fallen down, or have been improved. Right. So money or not, there's nothing to improve, and so the market does kind of find itself, I suppose, in a well, way that it hasn't lately. So. Well, and, exa and, and here's getting back to, I guess, that first point you made. Why are people looking at kind of these 60s, 70s vintage to do that? Because it's the new construction, as you say, it's taken everything to this upper level. That upper level wasn't there 20 years ago. That So a lot of these older properties, there was no compelling reason for them to have to do these things. Now mm -hmm. today, you can see that upper levels now now up here instead of here and so it, it's given those properties opportunities to improve increase rents but still stay 
way below this upper end mm -hmm. and and reach an affordable area of the market that quite frankly is I mean we've we've got a big concentration of you know lower income apartments that need to be upgraded right I want to do two more things here hit the high points of Oklahoma City and then shift to Tulsa what were the high points however you want to define that for the investment market in 2016 okay Oklahoma City Oklahoma City last year if you remember my my first comment was everything was going up 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 a little different this year all of my categories are down, 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 oh, okay? Not even flat, flat, flat. Just well, <laughs> here's, here's the, the number. If you look at, and now I'm gonna take those three groups. This is the total of, of all of those. If you look at the total volume for the year compared to 2015 against 2016, it was down 30%. Now is this total volume price or total volume Total volume, volume dollar, total dollar volume. Dollars invested. Dollar invested, invested. Okay. down 30%, okay? okay? If you look at, the number of units that sold is down 29%, okay? The average price per unit, it's only down 1%. I'll, I'll circle back to this in just a second. And then the number of transactions is down 12%, okay? So if there's a positive in, in those numbers, it's the fact that the, the pr average price per unit was only down 1%, which is, I mean, you can say it's level at, at that percentage point, right? Uh, so the value of apartments has stayed the same. There's just not as many transactions occurring. And you track 25 units and above, correct? Correct, 25 okay. units and above. Now, to give me the same assessment for Tulsa. Uh, same assessment for Tulsa. Let me flip to that. Same, uh, I'll run in the same order. 34% on total volume, okay? Total units down. sold, down, sorry. Total unit sold down 33%. Average price per unit, same, 1%. One, 1%. And then the number of transactions, 16. So really, if you look at it, Tulsa really reacted to the market the same way Oklahoma City did. Right. Now, you don't see as many units in Tulsa. It's not as big of market, okay? So when you look at 2016, the total unit sold in Tulsa was 2,725. Total units sold in Oklahoma City, 6,000. So the money pulled back, but not enough to even hardly touch the average price per unit. Correct. And that's a mix of the money and the, not the volatility, I guess the volatility of the, of the investment, as well as the price point that we're talking about. Well, exactly. And here I use a, a term in here of, um, of pivoting. I like to kind of, I mean, you think of it like a basketball play. I mean, investors, I mean, they're still keeping that one foot planted, but they're looking at other options, right. okay? And I think that other options are now taking them into 80s vintage and 70s vintage. And then it, when you get into that area, obviously, you know, the old uh, phrase is, you know, location, location, location. But it, it's all still true. I mean, when you're going to look at going in and taking a property and upgrading it and where can I go on my rates, it's, uh, it's going to come back to location and demographics and, and all of that. Uh, but that's where investors are, are starting to pivot, if you want to say, to, to look at other areas of the market. Good. Very good. This report is very thorough. And unlike a lot of them, it has lots of numbers and statistics and tables but also but it also has narrative mike can tell the story as well as use numbers to depict it that's one of the reasons i like to rely on him because i'm a word guy <laughs> uh, is this available online it is available online it's website. on our website you can go there and get it and it is your it, website the website very simple www.crrc.us very good I'm Richard Mize, real estate editor with the Oklahoma, and talking with and thanking Mike Buell with CRRC, Commercial Realty Resources Company in Norman. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for inviting me. You bet.